I've always been fascinated by fungi and their fruiting bodies. It's crazy to think how there's millions of species, but only about 100,000 have been described. It's even crazier how some of these fungi have special jobs, like decomposing organic matter and converting it into a plant-usable nutrient. Some of them have chemicals currently being studied that may prevent and even cure disease. Others are edible and so common that we eat them often. And some even have chemicals that activate receptors in our brains. I've even heard of studies where mushrooms were used to treat depression, PTSD, and even addiction. In this documentary, I'm going to attempt to grow two different species of mushrooms in my home. You have just tuned in. If you're a first time grower, have never grown before, or just like watching grow videos, click subscribe and grow along with me. I've never grown mushrooms before. And I know there's gonna be some know-it-alls and some shit talkers on YouTube that are gonna say I can't do this. And look, I might fail, but at this point, I'm all the way in. I had a brand new three x three grow tent laying around, so I'm gonna use this as my fruiting chamber. Mushrooms are gonna sit on the stainless steel wire shelf. I'm hoping that the stainless steel material prevents corrosion and also discourages bacterial growth. I had a brand new LED grow light laying around and I decided to hang this up as a light source. But this light is way too powerful for what I'm doing. So I've disconnected all but one light bar and I'm running it at its lowest setting. I've also installed a cool mist humidifier. I'm gonna have to maintain high humidity in this room and this little guy's gonna help me. There's a sensor inside the tent. It's connected to the autopilot environmental controller. This thing's old and discontinued, but I can trust it to do the job right. And you can find plenty of controllers on Amazon that do the exact same thing. I'm feeding fresh air into the tent through my AC Infinity filter box. This thing originally came with a dust filter. And I couldn't get my hands on some HEPA filters, so I installed some MERV 13s. And these are rated to filter out mold spores and bacteria. I'm using an AC Infinity duct fan to feed the box. The probe is disconnected. I'm using one of my environmental controllers instead. Inside the tent, I've installed a small duct fan. I know some people say this is not necessary, but I need those spores to be exhausted out that room because I don't want the possibility of them being in my house. I ordered lion's mane mushroom spores from Amazon. And one of the first things we have to do is germinate these spores. These spores need moisture and a food source. So I've also ordered bags of sterilized grain spawn from Amazon. They're sterilized to prevent bacteria and even other fungi from colonizing and competing with my lion mane spores. I read that this can also be done with pasteurized pre-cooked rice. So I picked up three bags of Uncle Ben's original microwavable rice. The liquid spores are shipped to you in a sterilized bag. So I'm gonna make sure that everything is clean and sterilized before I open it. Since the needle was sterilized out the bag, there was no need for me to sterilize it again. I just removed the needle protector and inject the bag through the self-healing seal. But now that I've used it and it's been exposed to my environment, I'm gonna have to sterilize it. Do this by heating the needle with a lighter till it gets red hot. Yes, it does form soot, but the soot is also sterilized. The other species that I picked up is from Ecuador, and I really don't know much about it here, but you can follow me on my Instagram to get more details. This is the first time I've ever done this, so I feel real clumsy and unsure of myself. And today, I made my first mistake and learned my first lesson. The needle thread broke. Note to self, you don't have to tighten it like a gorilla. The problem now is that everything's leaking out, it's not getting into the grain spawn. And I really hate to do this right now, but I have no options. So I'm gonna open up the bag, squirt some of the spore in there, and try to seal it up really quick with the impulse sealer. And the same goes for Uncle Ben's rice. Damn it. Wish me luck, guys. This is day number four, and I've been having trouble with temperature in this tent. It's gotten down to 60 degrees, and this has to be between 70 to 75 in order for it to germinate correctly. And look, I anticipated this. That's the reason why I set up the storage bin, because I thought, hey, you know what? Maybe this will act like a greenhouse, but it's not enough. 
So what I ended up doing was setting up this uh, humidifier and this one's just a little bit different than this cool air humidifier because this one actually puts out warm air and this helped for a bit but not enough. So I got the little mini heater and this is actually keeping the room at 75 degrees which is what I need it to be. Day number 13. I'm not really sure how long it's supposed to take the lion's mane mycelium to completely colonize this bag, but I could already see mycelium forming on the grains. I feel like it needs a lot more time though. The Ben's rice bags seem to be moving a little bit quicker. The barley inoculated with Ecuadorian cubensis doesn't show any real mycelium development. Neither does the Ben's rice inoculated with the same. I don't know if I did or I'm doing something wrong, but I guess I'm just gonna have to be patient with it. Day number 18. Today I'm gonna prepare the lion's mane grow medium. I've heard that lion's mane grows on hardwood. So I filled these mushroom grow bags with one pound of natural oak wood pellets. These are the exact type of pellets you use for barbecuing. I'm only preparing two bags of grow medium today. So I boiled half a gallon of water and I'm gonna use it to rehydrate and sterilize the grow medium. It only takes 160 degrees to kill most bacteria and fungi. I brought the water up to 215 to give me more time to work and also so the temp stays at the pasteurization sweet spot even longer. The reason I'm pasteurizing the medium is to kill any bacteria or fungus spore that may try to compete with my lion's mane. The idea is to pour in the hot water and seal up the bag quickly so that the interior remains at a high temperature for a long time. That was way too hot. It burned right through the bag. I had that mug set at eight. Let's try this again. This time it's set at 3.5. That seemed to work pretty good. I got my practice in and the second bag of grow medium was cake. I wrapped the bags in a towel to insulate them and also prevent the heat from escaping too quick. I then place them in a storage bin container and close the lid. I'm gonna leave them in there for a whole day. Day number 19. Today I'm gonna try to inoculate the grow medium with the Uncle Ben's rice. But before I do that, I'm gonna disinfect everything with alcohol to try to prevent contamination. I pulled the duct filter out of my tent and I hung it over my work table. I'm hoping this acts like a laminar flow hood. I disinfected the bag with alcohol. I also disinfected the Uncle Ben's bag of rice. I'm hoping this is enough mycelium to inoculate the grow medium bags. Shit, I guess we're gonna find out. I cut the grow bag containing the sterilized grow medium and the Uncle Ben's rice bag with disinfected scissors. I'm gonna try to move fast so these bags don't stay open too long. I don't want a random fungus spore or some bacteria to land in my stuff. I dropped in half the rice in the first bag and sealed it up immediately. After I completed the second bag, I mixed up the rice and the grow medium inside the bag while it was sealed. I then placed the bags on the rack inside the grow tent. Now I just gotta wait for the rest of the grain spawn to completely inoculate. 